SEC Network Women's Basketball is presented by Regions. The only SEC game with two ranked teams is happening tonight in Athens, Georgia, as number 19 Kentucky travels inside Stegman Coliseum to challenge number 17 Georgia. Both of these teams with a chance for that double buy in the SEC tournament next week in Greenville, South Carolina. You have to be a top four seed in order to do that. Georgia has that right now. They are third currently in the standings. Kentucky just outside the top four, but both have a shot to get there. Courtney Lyle alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. And it makes all the difference next week at the SEC tournament to be a top four seed. And right now, Georgia is the team that is playing at home. They are in that number three spot. So to secure that spot, they got to take care of the home court. Can they do that or can Kentucky come into Georgia and still one? Well, the good news is for Georgia, they have two athletes who can go off and take over a game, starting with Q Morrison. Two senior guards, and Q Morrison starts it all with her energy and her effort on the defensive end. And then once she gets control of the basketball, it's push, it's go, in transition. She makes the Lady Bulldogs go, and she has moved to that point guard spot. What does that do? That frees up Gabby Connolly to knock down the three-point shot. And she was red hot against Tennessee, knocking down five threes from beyond the three-point line but they're gonna face a hungry Kentucky team that wants to be in that top four spot, and they are led by Ryan Howard. Now, this is a player that does it all, all over the court. She can score it. She can score at all three levels. She also can distribute. And the other thing I think that goes unrecognizable for Ryan Howard is she can defend all five spots. That's what makes her a candidate for National Player of the Year. Georgia can clinch a double bye in the SEC tournament with a win. Kentucky, if they were to win out, they would clinch a double bye. But a loss for either team does not take them out of a conversation for one of those top four seeds in the SEC tournament. So we'll be keeping an eye on what happens in Stegman tonight. Georgia immediately goes inside to Jenna Stady, and they've got a size advantage down low. And keep an eye on that. Jenna Stady getting going early could be a good side for Georgia. Kentucky going with this lineup again. Jasmine Massengill running the point. Chastity Patterson gets to shift over to the two, and that's helped them get a little more fluid recently. Connolly just took it away from Tatiana Wyatt. Maya Caldwell in the corners off the mark. Both of these Defense. two programs are built on their defense, and they have the defensive principles man-to-man. -man. You've got to be on good help side when the ball is on the wing. The question is, when you're facing Kentucky, how are you going to guard Ryan Howard as Chastity Patterson drives in to score? Joni Taylor has said that Q Morrison will be the one starting on Howard tonight. Watching this matchup of Ryan Howard and Q Morrison, Q, the best way to defend Ryan Howard, don't let her touch the basketball because once she gets it, she can make a lot of things happen. Tatiana Wyatt with the rebound. Jenna Stady got a hand on it, but it goes out of bounds and it will stay with Kentucky. Massengill to inbound. Patterson lets it launch from the top of the key. And Tatiana Wyatt is fouled on the putback. Going to the glass has got to be a focus and something that Kentucky is really paying attention to because against Tennessee, Kentucky only had eight offensive rebounds. They gave up 20 
to South Carolina, and that's where that battle was lost. So you see already Kentucky is going to the boards. Kyra Elzey is in her first season as the head coach of Kentucky after serving several years as an assistant. Her team 15 and 6 overall. They have four wins against ranked opponents. And when you have Ryan Howard, who is so good, first ranked opponents averaging over 20 points per game, you are always in a ball game. Well, and Ryan Howard is averaging over 20 points a game, and she's got help around her this year. It's not like she's the one that's having to manufacture all the points for Kentucky. Georgia will go inside again with Stady. Howard's right there, helping out on defense and gets the takeaway. And finishes the bucket. You already see how she can affect the game on both ends of the floor, and we've seen a lot more of that from her this season. And her anticipation defensively away from the ball, I think that's where she's most dangerous. She always knows where she can get a little pick Get a steal. Q Morrison with the jumper for Georgia. <laughs> Kiki McKinney was right there to fight for it for Kentucky. It'll be Georgia basketball. Well, you watch Ryan Howard sneaks in. She gets the deflection and then the block on Jenna Stady then comes down at the other end. And one of the things I love about Ryan Howard's offense is nobody speeds her up. She can change her own pace and then create her own shot. And one of the, the challenges that Kyra Elsie has talked about in taking over this team was getting players to buy into their roles, knowing that she has outstanding players on this roster. So much help for Ryan Howard this season, but getting th them to understand that role and understand that every night is not going to be your night. And when Kentucky has help for Howard, that's when they're at their best. And her team, Ryan Howard's team, trust her. They know that she is a willing passer. And if they just play their roles and doing the things they need to do, she's going to get them the basketball and she's going to help them look the best that they can. And sometimes she's overly unselfish. Sometimes she needs to keep it and needs to take over. Caldwell gets one of two, but a rebound, a big rebound by Jordan Isaacs. Connolly's shot goes in and out. This is a red out game for Georgia if you're wondering why they're wearing their red uniforms and Kentucky's in the home whites. Got to keep an eye on how Georgia adjusts to their ball screen defense against Kentucky. That's something that Kyra Elsey knew that Georgia's very good at. Pull up won't go. It'll be Kentucky basketball. This time on the ball screen, Jordan Isaacs hedges, and so what does Dre Edwards do? She slips to the basket. She beats the defense down, so there's nobody between her and the rack. Foul was on Jordan Isaacs for Georgia, her first. Gabby Connolly playing the role of a thief and scores. We talked about what's on the line today, and both of these teams, if you want to win, be in the top four, you got to be focused on your defense, and I see the intensity from both of these teams. Dreonna Edwards is called for a foul while setting the screen. You get the pick by Gabby Connolly, and look, she's going full speed in on that left side, beating Jasmine Massengale to the basket. Well, this is Gabby Connolly is one of four seniors for Georgia. All of them have graduated and are pursuing their masters. They are 100% bought in to the culture that Joni Taylor has created when she took over this Georgia program. And she sure can score. Let me tell you, Gabby Connolly has that look. She's had it over the last two games, that determination to win. 
And I believe, just like her team follows Hugh Morrison, they follow Gabby Conley. Conley is playing with a lot of confidence right now. Edward shot rattles out into the hands of Maya Caldwell. Connolly feeding steady. Last touch by Kentucky. But you mentioned Gabby Connolly's really feeling it recently. Take a look at her numbers this season, averaging 12 points per game. The last three games, averaging 21 points per game and hitting almost five threes a game. She hit six against Missouri and then came back to back with five against Tennessee. That's the first time a Lady Bulldog has done that since 2003. She is the sharp shooter for the dogs right now. Connolly already has four points. They'll give it back to her for three. Doesn't get the bucket, but will go to the free throw line for three shots. Hey, Connolly was huge in Georgia's win on over Tennessee on Sunday. We'll show you that when we come back. SEC Network Women's Basketball presented by Regions, the official bank of the SEC. Georgia's already made history this season, something they haven't done since the 80s. Let's take you back to January 14th in Knoxville. They trailed by 15 at the half, but then Q Morrison, 17 points for the game, had three threes in the second half. And Georgia got its first win in Knoxville since 1996. But the Lady Bulldogs not done against Tennessee. Just on Sunday, Gabby Connolly, it was her turn to shine against the Lady Vols. She had 24 points, hit five three-pointers, and then Jordan Isaacs had the game-saving block right there on Renaya Davis. The first sweep of Tennessee for Georgia since the 1984-85 season. It's just impressive this Georgia Bulldog team has taken down Tennessee not once, but twice this year. Well, and Gabby Conley and Q Morrison got a lot of credit for that. But look, when you're making history after what was started with Coach Andy Landers, and that was back before Moose was invented, where he went with the slick back hairdo right there. He had the bowl cut. I remember Coach Landers back in those days. That was back when I was a freshman at Vanderbilt. That was the last time back in that 84-85 season that Georgia was able to sweep Tennessee, and now Joni Taylor's team has done just that. They are 3-3 three and three against ranked opponents this season, and they always come in with such a tough defensive game plan and tough defensive mindset. Joni Taylor does a terrific job with the scouts, and she gives a lot of credit to her staff, but she is a person that pays attention to detail. And I have talked about this. Joni Taylor plays attention to detail on offense and defense, and I'm going to tell you, she does it on the sideline as well with her fashion sense. She is one of the sharpest dresses, dressers in the nation. Gabby Connolly is at the line right now, shooting three shots. Hey, coming up next, our women's basketball doubleheader continues in Auburn with the Wooden Award late season finalist Chelsea Dungy at number 16, Arkansas, taking on the Auburn Tigers. That is coming up once we are done here in Athens tonight. I would say, going back to the fashion thing, Carolyn, we have two of the sharp dressers in the SEC because Kyra Elsey always looks great on the sidelines, too. Yeah, these two, they bring it every night with their, with their fits. And I mean outfits, <laughs> but they they have it going on. And I asked Joni Taylor, it's like, how do you have time? And she gave credit. She said that her best friend, Angela Jones, you did it at first as her best friend. Now she does it professionally. I want her card and find out if she could give me some advice. Same here as Tatiana Wyatt finishes in the paint for Kentucky. Just a two-point game inside Segment Coliseum. Georgia can clinch a double bye at the SEC tournament with a win. Kentucky looking to control its own destiny by winning out to get that double bye, but a loss won't cost that top four seed for either of these teams. But a win tonight can put your destiny in your own hands. 
You know that if you pull off that win, you can sit, breathe a little easier going into Sunday and know that you're not going to play until Friday for the SEC tournament. Makes a big difference. Ryan Howard with the ball. Oh, look at her shake off. Q Morrison. That's a fancy move right there, tied at 12. Morrison getting to the basket too, and she'll go to the free throw line. You watch Ryan Howard read Jenna Stady and sees that Jenna Stady is going to just stay toward the baseline. So before the defense rotates out to her, she pulls out, pulls up and shoots it right in that space before Connolly can rotate over. Morrison gets the first. The foul was on Olivia Owens of Kentucky. Both drop in for Q Morrison. Not a surprise as she is a 90% free throw shooter, so she'll take a seat for a quick breather. Georgia up by two. I can guarantee Q Morrison's not going to sit long. She'll get a quick blow, maybe if she can last through the rest of this quarter, but they'll need her back in, especially with the assignment of guard Ryan Howard. And Kentucky is shooting 50% from the field as a team. Right now, Sarah Ashley Barker trying to guard Ryan Howard. That's an air ball from Howard. Quick pass up ahead, Michaela Coombs in and out. Jasmine Massengill, offensive rebound by Howard. Kentucky's ball movement paying off, Tatiana Wyatt. But do you see how involved Ryan Howard was with everything that Kentucky does? She's got to stay involved. At times, she can kind of float out and watch. She's got to stay engaged. Already four points, three rebounds for Ryan Howard. She also has an assist. And for Georgia, they know that Jenna Stady has the size advantage. So in order to defend her, Kentucky's going to have to not allow her to get posted up two feet in the paint. And Howard just drove the ball straight at her. They call that on Jenna Stady. Her first. There have been times this season Jenna Stady's gotten into foul trouble. Yeah, there are times that Jenna Stady either foul trouble or she doesn't get off to a good start offensively. And she would, then Joni Taylor has to go to her bench and sub, go to Mallory Bates or Mari Davenport. Maury Davenport. Sadie's got four points right now, two for four from the field. So they will sub Stady out. Javin Nicholson, number 35 in red, has checked in. Check out Ryan Howard's numbers over her career against ranked opponents. Not too shabby. The bigger the game, the better she plays. She always steps up in the big moments. She's already had 30 points against three SEC teams this season alone. Two of those were ranked teams. And she's playing a different role this year. We talked about last year, Matthew Mitchell had said that he wanted Ryan Howard to take at least 20 shots a game. She doesn't have to take as many shots this year because she's got talent around her. She's got Chastity Patterson. She has uh, Dre Edwards that also are, are willing scorers. Treasure Hunt in the game now as Howard gets a breather, misses the layup. Sarah Ashley Barker. A little bit off. Javin Nicholson with the offensive rebound, and here comes Barker again. Go, 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 go. 
Michaela Coombs will pull it out, run things for Georgia here. Nicholson inside. And there's a travel called on Javin Nicholson. And the steadiness of Georgia to be able to score without Jenna Stady and without Q Morrison on the floor right now. Michaela Coombs is the one that can make things happen. Have her coming off ball screen. She's so athletic. Owen's looking for some help. Jasmine Massengill from three. Kentucky has not hit a three yet. In fact, we haven't had a three hit in this game. Shot clock still on for Georgia. Barker. Wildcats can hold for the last shot of the quarter. Massengill will hold up here and slow it down. Chassie Patterson needs to get, make herself an option. We got a close ball game in Athens tonight. Georgia on top of Kentucky, but just by a point. excited to celebrate black history always taking a look at some historical hidden figures in the SEC Bernadette Locke now Bernadette Maddox was the first female All-American at Georgia she followed coach Andy Landers from Roan State to UGA back in 1979 but she also has a Kentucky connection she was the first female to serve as a men's assistant coach in Division One back in 1990 and then eventually became the first black female head coach of Kentucky women's basketball in 1995 and coach Andy Landers holds her in pretty high regard. Bernadette, Bernadette's the first lady of Georgia basketball. She's the cornerstone that the program was built on. The success that we experienced for 36 years, trace it all back to Bernadette. When you talk about Bernadette Maddox as a pioneer and starting at the University of Georgia, she hasn't forgotten where she's come from. Both coaches have talked about now that they are black women that are head coaches in the SEC, Bernadette Maddox reached back to Kyra Elzing and gave her some advice when the interim was removed from her title. And Joni Taylor has talked about how Bernadette Maddox had a Zoom and came and talked to her players about not what just what you're doing as basketball players now, but what happens for you in life after basketball. Rarely talk about basketball when they have those conversations, but it's been so cool for Bernadette Maddox to get the chance to address this team this year. Even if it was over Zoom, it's still, it's still pretty cool and pretty meaningful. I had the opportunity. I was an assistant in Bernadette's first year at the University of Kentucky. And, you know, it's learn on the job. It was her first head coaching job. But then she was able to go on and take Kentucky to the NCAA tournament. Well, both of these teams slated to make the NCAA tournament this year. Kentucky projected as a four seed. Georgia projected as a three seed. It's been a really close first quarter now that we're entered the second quarter here. Georgia just up by a point. Ryan Howard and Q Morrison both back in the game. And I think both coaches are using the strategy of Q Morrison got some rest because Joni Taylor knows that she's going to have to expend a lot of energy guarding Ryan Howard. And Kyra Elsey gave Ryan Howard a little break at the end of that first quarter so that she could come back in and be strong in this second quarter. Oh, excuse me, Q Morrison not in there just yet. Sarah Ashley Barker is still in the game for Georgia. Inside to Javin Nicholson. Coombs fighting for it and gives Georgia a second chance. 
two teams that are so evenly matched, the difference is going to be made on the glass. Connolly from three. We haven't had a three made by either team tonight. Well, to your point, Carolyn, rebounds just an advantage to Kentucky by one. And we knew that was going to be a focus of the Wildcats because of how they were out-rebounded by South Carolina. And I asked Kyra Elsie, I said, did you all work on box out? And she did, took a pause and looked at me like, are you kidding me? Box out was every other word in practice. That's how she ended our conversation with her. She said, oh, and also we're going to box out. Just kept bringing it up. <laughs> Connolly is called for her first foul. Already seven points for Gabby Connolly tonight. Chastity Patterson at the line. Well, Saturday right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app, our full day of college basketball is capped by this important matchup at 6 Eastern, number 6 Alabama looking to bounce back and clinch at least a tie for their first regular season SEC title since 2002. They're taking on Mississippi State. Alabama, of course, upset by Arkansas on Wednesday. Crimson tied 13-2 in SEC play. Georgia had the advantage but threw the ball away to Ryan Howard. And then they gave it right back, thanks to the pick from Coombs. Travel by Caldwell. And Michaela Coombs has added so much to Georgia this season. Well, she transferred from Connecticut. You know, if you're going to Connecticut to start with, you're a player. And then she then transferred from Connecticut to Georgia, had to sit out last season. But coming in now, she's she is playing about the third most minutes on the team, and she's coming off the bench because that's how much confidence Joni Taylor has on in Michaela Coombs. And she's trying to gear up now too to play an even bigger role next season for them because they could lose this amazing senior class. Remember, everybody has that year of eligibility. They could come back, but that decision has not been made yet. It's interesting when you talk to coaches about, well, next year with this senior class, and they'll stop you and go, well, they could come back. And I think that all these coaches are keeping hope that a lot of these valuable seniors come back and use that next year. Because look, you can go to graduate school and have the university pay for it. Why not? Second foul called on Kiki McKinney. It puts Jordan Isaacs at the line. Georgia still looking for its first points of the second quarter. Q Morrison still out, not in foul trouble, has four points. Or excuse me, she does have two fouls. Only played six minutes. Remember, she had two fouls in that first half of the first Tennessee meeting and had to sit for the majority of that first half but that second half she came out like gangbusters she was the real difference maker in knoxville for georgia he hit three threes in that second half and helped propel georgia to the win over tennessee in knoxville first time since 96. Now Kentucky has switched to a 2-3 zone. And why not? Georgia has not been hitting from the perimeter. Blair Green took the ball away, but her, her foot was on the line. Uh, from this 1-4 lineup, the players can space out to the corners and cross, or you could have a shooter that steps back and set a, like an elevator screen. Oh, 
Georgia got the fresh 30 second shot clock because of the change of possession. Barker steps into it and hits. Joni Taylor told us every time Sarah Ashley Barker pulls the trigger, she sees, she feels that shot's going in. First three-pointer of the game for either team. Just watching, watching Georgia throughout the season, I have seen Sarah Ashley Barker, her shoulders go back a little bit more. That freshman is gaining a lot of confidence. Michaela Coombs with the easy bucket. Patterson looking for space, too high up off the window. Wyatt comes down with it. Masson Gill. Another offensive rebound for Kentucky. Tatiana Wyatt has really been patient, waited her time, and now Kyra Elsey putting her in the starting lineup. She's just such a great leader and her scoring has picked up. Yeah, she's averaging about two more points per game than when she was not in the starting lineup. Jasmine Massengill has also moved into the starting lineup and her numbers are up. You know, one of the things Kyra Elsey wants from Jasmine Massengill, she's a great point guard, she's a great facilitator, but Kyra also wants Jasmine Massengill to be a scorer, be very aggressive offensively. Jenna Stady just picked up her second foul. So Georgia's got Stady and Q Morrison with two fouls. No problem for Howard to drive in and we're tied again. Stolen away, Robin Benton. And the bucket and going to the free throw line. Showtime. You know, Robin Benton is a transfer from Auburn, so she's already defensive minded and she anticipated, go up the line, gets the deflection, keeps it in bounds and that leads right into this transition basket. Chloe Chapman is called for the foul. Can't complete the three-point play. <laughs> Chloe Chapman, she was looking for Mallory Bates, picked off by Howard. Makes it look easy. Well, Howard gets in that no pass zone where she in that mindset, she's just tough to stop. She's got nine points. Great box out by Blair Green. Yeah, get the ball to Ryan Howard. Right now, she's ready to make it happen. Could it be? Could it be Howard time? Ryan Howard already has 12 points. Kentucky with a seven point lead. A candidate for national player of the year. Why, who? Ryan Howard, number 10 for the Kentucky Wildcats. Decide. 12 points and we were kind of looking comparing her everybody's talking about Paige Becker so we wanted to compare their numbers against ranked teams this season points per game pretty even let's take a look at rebounds per game Ryan Howard has the edge with 7.2 rebounds per game against ranked opponents and assists per game that 
Advantage goes to Paige Beckers. It's important to note UConn has played five ranked opponents. Kentucky has played nine ranked teams this season. I think that is a terrific comparison there. A lot of people might just look at scoring and say, well, is Ryan Howard's game off? No, she's actually doing more. She has such an effect on the total production of the Kentucky offense and defense. Kyra Elsie talks about Ryan Howard can guard one through five, and she can play one through five on the offensive side as well. Ryan Howard is the only player in the SEC to lead their team in points per game, rebounds per game, and assists per game. If that doesn't say, look at my entire body of work, I don't know what else does. <laughs> Absolutely. And right now, she's got that look in her eye, that refused to lose mentality. She took over in that early part of the second quarter. Gabby Connolly is up to nine points for Georgia. Bulldogs in some foul trouble. Jenna Stady and Q Morrison both on the bench with two fouls. <laughs> Olivia Owens' shot goes over the backboard. Stady with four points. Q Morrison also over there on the bench. She has four points, but anticipating they'll probably sit the last 336 of this half. Yeah, just as long as Georgia can keep it in striking distance, Jody Taylor can ride it to the half with those two key starters on the bench. Connolly for three. Georgia one for seven from behind the arc. The rebounding is even. Sarah Ashley Parker, no. Fresh 20 for Georgia. The rebounding, I can guarantee you Kyra Elsie is going to point that offensive rebound out in the locker room. And they get it right back again. Parker draws the foul. Well, Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 Central, we'll have a two-hour recap of this week's Men's Swimming and Diving Championships. The Florida Gators have won the last eight titles. And then Sunday at 8 Eastern, we'll also have a two-hour recap of this weekend's SEC Indoor Track and Field Championships, both right here on the SEC Network. That foul's going to be on Treasure Hunt of Kentucky. Puts so now at the line, Georgia now in the bonus. I was going to say that Georgia now, everything should be attacking the basket. They're not shooting the ball well from the perimeter, and every time they go to drive, they can put the pressure on Kentucky's defense and have an opportunity to get to the free throw line, but you've got to make your free throws. Georgia usually does. They're second in the SEC, shooting 73% from the free throw line. It has been close the entire way. Georgia had a one-point lead at the end of the first quarter. Wow, Howard just lost it, and they said that it was touched by Georgia. The officials are going to talk about this, and the reverse of the call will be Georgia ball. Now Kentucky back in a man-to-man -man defense. They have been switching up between the zone and the man-to-man, -man, trying to keep Georgia off balance. <laughs> Matt 
Nassengill to the SEC. Logo gets the bounce. Finally kicks out to Caldwell. The hustle from Sarah Ashley Parker to keep that alive. I think George has got to be winning the 50-50 balls right now. They have been scrappy. Connolly pull up. Over the back call, it's going to be Kentucky ball. We're talking about how Jasmine Massengale has to be willing to score. The posts aren't stepping up on that ball screen, so she will be able to get back to the nail, that sweet spot at the free throw line area to be able to score. But Sarah Ashley Barker just giving the second effort right now for the Georgia Bulldogs. Tatiana Wyatt is at the free throw line. Javin Nicholson called for her second foul, so you can add her to the list of foul troubles for Georgia here in the first half, along with Morrison and Stady. Shot I don't know what, for Georgia. But Georgia could go score quick. Attack, they could have gone two for one. Georgia's missed its last seven shots now. Kentucky can hold for that final shot of the half. Well, and with Ryan Howard, I don't care who you got to come off of. If you're going to stop Kentucky, you got to send two at Ryan Howard. She's got Barker on her now. Here comes the screen. Chastity Patterson fires the final shot of the half. Automatic, no hesitation from Chastity Patterson. A 10-point lead for Kentucky at the half. Let's get you back to Alyssa and the gang in the studio. Basketball presented by Regions. Kentucky with its largest lead. Up 10 on number 17, Georgia in Athens. Courtney Lyle and Carolyn Peck with you. Ryan Howard turned it on in that first half for Kentucky, specifically the second quarter. Well, she was locked in from the beginning, and especially when she can turn defense into offense. And like I said, nobody can speed her up. She goes at her own pace. She can find opportunities to score. And off the ball screen, if you send two at her, she'll find the opening. Tassie Patterson there and willing, able to knock down the three. Howard had seven points alone in that second quarter. This is a big game for both teams. Georgia can clinch a double bye in the SEC tournament with a win. Kentucky wants to win out to get that double bye for sure, but a loss today does not eliminate either team from the double bye in the SEC tournament, but you want it to be in your hands. And right now this game is in Kentucky's hands, but Georgia does get Jenna Stady and Q Morrison back. They were in foul trouble in that first half. Q Morrison only played six minutes in that first half. So she's got a lot of making up to do. She's at the top of your screen, number 23 in red. Jenna Stady working inside, they give her the ball. First time she touches it, it goes in here in the third quarter. There were three white jerseys around her, too. It didn't matter. Howard at the elbow. Touched by Georgia last, it will stay with Kentucky. Ryan Howard getting some help from Tatiana Wyatt in that first half. Those two combined for 21 points and nine rebounds for Kentucky. Wildcats ended the half on a 6-0 run, hit seven of their last nine shots. When talking to Kyra Elsie, we had talked about who were the big three. You got 
Ryan Howard, she said Chassie Patterson, probably Dre Edwards. So getting the additional offensive production from Tatiana Wyatt, that's a bonus. That's huge for Kentucky. And yeah, Wyatt has earned her way back into the starting lineup of veteran on this Kentucky team and has been making a difference, averaging about six points per game over her last six games. There's Tot. Patterson resets. Three seconds called on Tatiana Wyatt. Kentucky coming 94 feet defensively with the press. High low to Jordan Isaacs, easy bucket underneath. And Kyra Elsie wants to take a timeout. It's making a difference to have Jenna Stady and Q Morrison on the floor for Georgia, trying to cut down on this Kentucky lead. the third quarter Kentucky on top of Georgia 34 to 28 but Georgia push, doing a little push here um, to get back in this game and for I'm sorry there's a cake being delivered um. <laughs> well because we wanted to wish Courtney Lyle a very very happy birthday today is her birthday since we can't be in the same place I am in Nashville you are in Knoxville so it was a group effort from production and your boyfriend to get you a cake and wish you happy birthday guys thank you I wish for a good rest of this ball game so hopefully it'll come true because I just told you what I wished for <laughs> Thank you, guys. That means a lot. I'm excited to share this birthday with you and getting to watch these two talented teams play today. Can you, you bring know, me a piece of that cake to Greenville? You got it. I'll stick it in the freezer no. right now. It'll make it. <laughs> Man, you guys got me with that one. Is that what you call us? Some trickeration there, Carolyn? Trickeration. You're not the only one that can pull it off, but hey, there's some trickeration right there from Ryan Howard. Yeah, Kentucky's going to need her. Georgia's starting to make a push here in this third quarter. A big game for both teams, trying to make sure they lock up that double bye in the SEC tournament next week. And what Georgia has done is they have attacked the post specifically going to Jenna Stady, whether it be on the low block or the last possession before the timeout, the high low to Jordan Isaacs. Yeah, you see what a difference it makes for Georgia to have Jenna Stady in the game. She was in trouble that first half with two fouls. And you see Kentucky has gone to a 2-3 zone to really stop the paint production from Georgia. This is Coombs at the point. Q Morrison, that's pretty. Kentucky led by 10 at the half. Georgia's cut it to six. Well, now having Q Morrison back in the game, she can run the point. So Gabby Connolly can be off in a shooting position, spread the floor so that Georgia can do that right there. Go inside to Jenna Stady. The paint points are just adding up for Georgia right now. It's helping them get back in this game.
We watched Q Morrison off the top of the screen, being, the top of the zone being screened by Jordan Isaac. She gives her enough room to get the space. And then the high low right there. The best way to get the ball to the post player to avoid help is to go from the top down. It's tough to help from there. Howard in control now. Chastity Patterson. Oh, but then Q Morrison with the hustle. Morrison makes him go in transition. If she doesn't have the ball, she's going to get out. If she's got it, she's going to push. We watch Q Morrison, she's at the bottom of the screen, but gets out wide and cuts in just in time. That's how you run the lane in transition. You can't run it narrow. You gotta get way out on the outside, make the defense make some decisions. Kentucky outscored Georgia 19 to eight in that second quarter. Well, now Georgia has outscored Kentucky 10 to four here in the third. Howard is fouled. And if that's on Morrison, that's her third. It is. Well, what has Kentucky done? They have gone to a small lineup. They've got Kiki McKinney and Dre Edwards in the game. All five players can play out on the perimeter. Huge for Kim Morrison to pick up her third. What a difference she has made coming back into the game in this third quarter. She's still in there, gonna have to be careful. How did she make that go in? Wow. And Chastity Patterson says, watch this. You don't think both these teams know what's on the line? They're playing like it. Both teams with a shot at a top four seed in the SEC tournament, meaning they get a double bye. And Blair Green traveled. Morrison body control around Dre Edwards and then Chastity Patterson for the pull up, getting those buckets back. Both teams with two players in double figures. Offensive foul on Michaela Coombs. Chastity Patterson steps up and takes the charge. Like, there's a reason that Chassie Patterson is still on that list for Naismith Defensive Player of the Year. It's plays like that. If she's not still in the basketball, she's getting her body in the right place at the right time. Now, she's already fourth in the nation this season in total steals. It's been nice to see her get so comfortable with this Kentucky offense and on the defensive end of the floor. Traveling on Dre Edwards. And I think I saw Kyra Edwards, Kyra Elsie there saying, get the ball to Ryan Howard. She wants Ryan Howard to handle the basketball. I feel like that's always a good game plan. Give the ball to Howard? Absolutely. Stady has it stolen. There's Ryan Howard with the basketball to Patterson in stride. Huge offensive rebound for Dre Edwards. Patterson in the paint. Uh-oh, you can't leave Q Morrison that open behind the arc. 
No way. Joni Taylor made the decision to leave Q Morrison in the game with three fouls. She is trusting her senior to be able to play without picking up that fourth. Seven straight games for Q Morrison in double figures. It'll stay with Georgia. Georgia's hit five of their last six shots. Q Morrison feeling it in the third quarter. She's making up for lost time. Q Morrison spent only six minutes in the game in the first half, so why not? Pull the three if they're not going to guard you. That's the way Georgia can get back in this ball game. Here we go. Both these teams battling for that spot in the SEC tournament next week. Georgia's got a little work to do, but they're looking better here in the third quarter. Take a look at their numbers in wins versus losses, and what stood out is rebounds, turnovers, and field goal percentage. Tonight, the field goal percentage much better than it was in the second half, in the first half. They do have 11 turnovers, though. But what has been working for Georgia? I was going to say, go in the paint, but then if you had your center knock down a three, it'd be like, Whoa. shut my mouth. <laughs> Kentucky led by 10 points at the half. Georgia got Q Morrison and Jenna Stady back in the game in the third quarter. They were in foul trouble in that first half. Second foul on Benton. McHugh Morrison again, remember she's playing with three fouls. That was a gutsy defensive play, drawing that charge from Robin Benton. And Georgia throws it away, it'll be Kentucky ball. And Ryan Howard was so good for Kentucky in that first half. She had 12 points, just three points here in the third quarter. Here she is. Olivia Owens at the elbow. First points for Owens. And Jordan Isaacs is going to draw the foul on Owens. Isaacs has made such a big difference for Georgia this season, too. And it's not something that you'll see light up a stat sheet, but she makes big plays. She got the offensive rebound in the win against Arkansas where gave Georgia the extra possession to kick out where Gabby Connolly hit the three. And then against Tennessee, she got the block when Renaya Davis had that final look at the buzzer. Her defensive impact, she does so many things that don't show up in the stat sheet. And she's the only non-senior in the starting lineup for the Georgia Bulldogs. It's everything else she does that gets her that starting spot as Ryan Howard draws the foul by Barker. Well, coming up next, our women's basketball doubleheader continues in Auburn with the Wooden Award late season finalist Chelsea Dungy and 16th ranked Arkansas taking on the Tigers. How good has Chelsea Dungy looked this season? Uh, she has gotten herself in tremendous shape. She's pro ready. She's got the versatility of her game, stretch four. She's hitting the three. She's getting to the free throw line, even added to and proved on her mid-range game. 
She is something special. Definitely in the running for SEC Player of the Year. Howard, transition three. Back on track. That's a candidate for SEC Player of the Year right there. Every coach Kentucky I Madden. talk to about Ryan Howard, they talk about her complete game. They, they have to spend nights awake trying to figure out ways to guard her. It's not an easy task. Howard already has 19 points. And as we said, she's put up 30 plus points against three SEC opponents this year, two of them against ranked teams. Because she can score so many different ways. Massengill going to the free throw line. Coombs called for her second. The key for Kentucky, though, has been getting help for Howard this season. And she's got Chastity Patterson helping her out tonight with 14 points. Tatiana Wyeth also helping her out with nine. Saturday right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app, our full day of college basketball, capped off by this important matchup at 6 Eastern. Number 6 Alabama looking to clinch at least a share of their first SEC regular season title since 2002. They'll take on Mississippi State. The Alabama team has four players averaging double figures, led by Jaden Shackelford with just over 14 points a game. I think that's the balance attack Kentucky wants as well. And Kyra Elsie wants to get Jasmine Massengill to continue to be an offensive threat for the Wildcats. Akihi McKinney was just called for her third foul, but they've moved, as you mentioned, Massengill into that starting lineup, and they want her to bring that scoring mentality because it's only going to help Kentucky have more success if she's an offensive threat. Well, the thing that she has done is she can get into the paint and she can score. It also frees up Chastity Patterson not to have to run the point and look for scoring. The other area that Kyra Elsie wants to see from Jasmine Massengale is to pick up her defensive excitement, excitement, bring another level of defensive intensity to the floor. Shot clock still on. This is Patterson with the ball. Morrison in control, 20 seconds left in the third quarter. With this matchup, I'd go a 1-4 flat, like Hugh Morrison, go one-on-one -on -one with Treasure Hunt. Morrison short on the three. <laughs> Kentucky will try to heave up a shot by Massengill, but the Wildcats Still hanging on to that lead with 10 minutes to play and seeding in the SEC tournament on the line in Athens tonight. Start of the fourth quarter in Athens. Georgia's got some work to do. They're down 51 to 44, but Q Morrison has been a big help for the Lady Bulldogs tonight. Well, she just makes this team go, picks up the tempo. She finds openings. She gets out in transition. There's just a speed about her game. And because of the pressure she keeps on the defense, it also opens up opportunities for her to have a three-point option as well. She's going to need more of that in order for Georgia to have a shot at trying to protect home court and secure that double bye for the SEC tournament. Yeah, Georgia, a win tonight would secure them a top four seed in the SEC tournament next weekend in Greenville, South Carolina, meaning they don't have to play till Friday. They get that double bye. 
Kentucky also has a shot with a win tonight and a win on Sunday to get the double bye. A loss does not count either of these teams necessarily out of that race for a top four seed, but you want to be in control of your own destiny. And Georgia and Kentucky both want to win this game to help do that. Well, you don't want to be at home or finishing your game on Sunday waiting for somebody else to hope they lose so that you can get the bye. You just take care of your business and then you go home and you pack for three days, Friday, Saturday, going to the championship on Sunday. Kentucky really jumped out to a big lead in the second quarter when they outscored Georgia 19 to eight. They had a 10 point lead at half. Cats still in control, but Georgia not far behind. Howard inside to Wyatt, gets blocked by Sarah Ashley Barker. Corey Davenport working inside. Georgia has dealt with foul trouble all night. Tatiana Wyatt thought she had a mismatch with Q Morrison, but she didn't, re she didn't recognize that Sarah Ashley Barker coming from the weak side for the block. Q will come and get it. It's Maury Davenport and Jordan Isaacs working inside for the Lady Bulldogs right now. Q. Kentucky ball. We have so many references back to Georgia's games against Tennessee, but those games were also when Maury Davenport in Knoxville played a huge part in an inside presence without Jenna Stady on the court for the Lady Bulldogs. Now Georgia was planning to use this year to really incorporate Maury Davenport into their system to let her learn she wasn't going to play, was going to go ahead and take that year in between after the transfer, but because of the eligibility rule this season, they found a couple of spots they can plug her in, and she's really helped them when she's come in the game. And Joni Taylor talks about she doesn't pre-plan of whether or not Maury's going to play, but Maury's always ready. And Joni doesn't have to tell her, listen, this is a game you're going to get in or not. And there are some games where Maury doesn't get in, and she's okay with that, and she's in the gym the next day continuing to work on her game. Georgia has Jenna Stady now in with three fouls. Jenna Stady. On the block, Stady's going to get a double team. So being able to pop her up to that free throw line area, use her face up game. Jordan Isaac saves it. That's the kind of hustle plays we're talking about that Isaac gives Georgia. Jenna Stady was too far underneath the basket. It will stay with the Lady Bulldogs. Kiki McKinney in the game for Kentucky. She's got three fouls. Gabby Connolly back in for Georgia. Kentucky ball. It came, bounced off Q Morrison's head. <laughs> That's 13 turnovers now for each team. She didn't have enough room, I didn't even think, to, to take an extra step. One, two step? I, I didn't see it. I didn't see the travel.
Howard and Morrison get tangled up going for the rebound. Georgia ball. But Georgia's got to recognize that Kentucky is switching screens. When there's a big on little, Jordan Isaacs ended up with a small guard on her, but she was up top. That's where your posts need to interchange. Big, the post that has the guard on her, go down and post up. Gabby Connolly got loose, and when she gets loose, she's going to hit that shot. See now, Ron Howard has a post. Jordan Isaac, now that's a good defender on her. Good job defensively by Jordan Isaac. Stadium trouble, turns it over. Pass, Patterson has it. Misses the layup. Q Morrison now can push, but she'll hold up. Doesn't have the numbers. Ryan Howard. That's what I was thinking. Give the ball to number 10 in white. Coming in transition, you're not matched up. Best option you can go to. She's got 22 points, and Jenna Stady is fouled. Howard, three for three from behind the arc. She's so Patterson good. was called for her first foul. Yeah, she is so good. Step back from Chastity Patterson. Foul by Robin Benton. What Georgia needs, what Kentucky needs to do is they have got to not give any open looks for Gabby Connolly and then keep the ball outside. Robin Benton almost swiped it. Forces it out, it will stay with Georgia. They'll have the basketball when we come back under five minutes to play in Athens, Kentucky on top 54 to 49. SEC Network Women's Basketball is presented by Regents, the official bank of the SEC. So what an addition, Destiny Slocum, who's been for Arkansas this season, a grad transfer. We've got a close one here in Athens. Kentucky on top of Georgia. Both of these teams slated to get in the NCAA tournament. Georgia right now a three seed, Kentucky a four seed. Charlie Cream says the outcome of this game won't really change that. They're pretty much locked into those spots as long as they take care of business down the stretch. But this is a big game when it comes to SEC tournament seedings. Both teams have a chance to get the double bye in Greenville next week. Well, Kentucky right now with the lead, they just need to be patient. They don't need to rush shots, and that's where the ball needs to go. It needs to go through the hands of Ryan Howard. And she can put it through the hoop pretty easily. She now has 24 points. Quick score on the other end for Georgia by Jenna Staney. They've had a lot of success going inside. Well, right now, Kentucky has in a smaller lineup, and Jenna Staney has the height advantage. You can pretty much go to her every time down. Just keep her down low in the paint for the high percentage shot. Staney only played 11 minutes in the first half due to foul trouble.
Edwards in the short corner. Kentucky ball. Seconds now for the Cats. Jordan Isaacs doing a great job defending Jasmine Massengill, and they won't get the shot. And see now, Georgia can put Connolly in a ball screen action with Jenna Stady. If they switch it, she's going to have a huge size advantage inside. Or you can do that right there because Jenna Stady has an advantage inside. She's been aggressive there tonight. Yeah, how long or can Kentucky continue to stay with a smaller post player inside trying to go one on one with Jenna Stady? Kentucky's led by as many as 10 tonight. Howard with the quick, quick trigger. She has not missed from three-point land. That's a bad girl right there. 27 points. You see Kyra Elsey telling her team, take your time, take care of the ball. The clock is your friend. Robin Benton kicks back to Kiki McKinney. Under two minutes to go, a tight game in Athens. That's a good decision by Dre Edwards, not to force the issue, but again, use the clock. Kentucky's gonna call a timeout here. They're up 59-53, a minute 26 to go. Well, tonight, after our women's college basketball doubleheader, the SEC Now team will have a complete breakdown of both games, as well as interviews with coaches and players. You can see it at 11 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. How about 27 points, four for four from three for Ryan Howard? Well, Ryan Howard has just made it happen. She has had Hugh Morrison, she has had Sarah Ashley Barker on her, but each time she has found a way to score. She's knocking it down from the three. She also has been able to come off that ball screen as well. Just 27 points, shooting 10 of 15 from the floor right now. Ryan Howard now has 202 career three-pointers after hitting four of them tonight. Georgia has done a good job, though, of trying to work back and cut this lead down. Remember, Kentucky led by 10 points at the half. It's helped to have Q Morrison and Jenna Stady back in the game. But Kyra Elsie called this timeout. She wants to make sure that her team has a good executed offense and using this shot clock. Do you remember the play to end the half with Ryan Howard coming off the ball screen. So much attention to Ryan. That opened up Chastity Patterson. So can, Georgia's got to be aware of where Chastity Patterson is. And Q Morrison fouls Howard, her fourth foul. Well, and Georgia right now has only fouled once. So if they're going to try to get to a situation where they would want to put Kentucky at the free throw line, 
they're going to have to foul. Well, Kiki McKinney wide open, but off the mark. She is a threat from three-point range. So now Georgia doesn't need to panic. Now, if you if Conley has an open three, pull the trigger. Otherwise, I'd attack the basket. Isaacs does and finishes. Timeout, Kentucky. Kyra Elsey would have the option to advance the basketball here. Well, Isaacs makes the right decision in attacking the basket, but right away, Kyra Elsey calls the timeout before the ball is inbounded or advanced so that she can advance the basketball. But they're going to have to do a better job of inbounding the ball. Remember the last possession, they almost threw it away. Number one, get the ball inbounds. Number two, protect the basketball. Now, it's a two possession game. Georgia does not have to foul. What they can do is go for the steal. But remember, Q Morrison has four fouls. If she's still guarding Ryan Howard, I'm giving Ryan Howard the basketball and I'm attacking Q Morrison. If I'm Georgia, I'm sending a double team to help Morrison out. Again, both teams trying to get this win to help them earn that double buy next week in Greenville. Howard yeah, I would just clear out. On her. Clear out right now. Morrison's got four fouls. Jenna Stady with a huge block of Howard. Connolly, the floater. Kentucky ball with 22.4 seconds left. Now, if I'm Kyra Elsie, don't call a timeout right now. You just have to get the ball in. They do, and Michaela Coombs fouls Chastity Patterson. Remember, Georgia still has a couple fouls to give. That's just their second. So now, immediately, Georgia's going to need to foul. They've got to get two more fouls in with this just under 22 seconds left. Stays with Kentucky as Coombs touched it last. They do have the option to go to the monitor and double check this to make sure they give the correct team the ball. Well, this is an extra timeout for both teams. Now, one of the things that Kentucky could, Kentucky, Georgia could do is put themselves in a position as Kentucky's cutting to try to draw an offensive foul. I think that's off Coombs. Look. Yeah, they're, we told too they're taking a look at the clock here. Right now it's reading and they do reset it to 21.1 seconds left. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know. Can he touch that last? <laughs> I, that's what I'm looking at. Look, the way McKinney tell. pulls her hand back, it's almost like she's guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Kentucky has one timeout remaining. Georgia has three timeouts remaining. It is Georgia ball with 21.1 seconds left, down by four. A win for Georgia gets them the double bye in the SEC tournament. So from this box set, you can go uh, with a pick the picker. And especially if you have Gabby Connolly setting the screen for it, Jenna Stady cutting to the basket. If the defense helps, you can have Connolly open for the shot. 
Gabby Connolly hit the deck pretty hard trying to get through that screen. It's on Tatiana Wyatt, her fourth. I'd run the same thing again, setting that screen because you've got big Jenna Stady coming to the basket. You can't you waste too much time. They were trying to give it to Connolly. Howard swiped it. And they've got a foul. Georgia still has a foul to give. A huge steal for Ryan Howard. Now Kentucky knows that Georgia's got a foul. So the first and th thing you've got to do is you've got to get the ball in, then protect it. Georgia's going to have to substitute offense to defense because Q Morrison has four fouls. Q can't go too far away. I know they've got assigned seats because of the COVID protocol, but she's got to be handy to come right back in for Joni Taylor. They get it to Howard and Coombs will foul her. That's the fourth team foul. So the next foul by Georgia and Kentucky will be shooting. Again, Georgia's going to have to foul right away. Jenna Stady fouls. So now Georgia, excuse me, Kentucky will head to the free throw line as this is the fifth team foul in the quarter. Now Georgia has three, foul, three timeouts left. So if she makes this or miss, you get the rebound. Immediate timeout. Do not advance the basketball, otherwise you can't. Then Joni Taylor cannot advance the ball to call a sideline, side out of bounds play. Big free throws from Tatiana Wyatt, and timeout is called by Georgia. They will have two timeouts remaining. But just 9.1 seconds, not a lot of time to make up. Well, you don't need a lot of time either, especially when you've got shooters like Connolly and Q Morrison. But you have got to make sure that you execute because Kentucky is going to switch all screens. You give, give Kentucky, if you are Kentucky, you give Georgia twos. You don't give them threes. So you switch everything and run Georgia off the three-point line and make them shoot a layup and then don't foul. Georgia with two timeouts left. Kentucky with one timeout left. Here they go. Inbound into Stady. And Kentucky does foul Jordan Isaacs on the shot. She should be getting three shots at the free throw line. That's the biggest no-no you could have done. Isaacs, that's smart though. As soon as you get it, get into your act of your shot. The official saw it. Now she goes and will shoot three. She is three of six from the free throw line tonight. They're double checking the clock again. It currently reading 4.3 seconds left with Isaacs at the line shooting three. Clock changes to five seconds remaining. Yeah, with five seconds to five seconds left, if she could hit the first two, I might even think about missing the third one and run. You can run like a cross play where Coombs would cut in front of. Q Morrison and Q Morrison come around to the outside. It's a little offensive rebounding kind of drill off the free throw line.
First two go in for Isaacs. It's a four-point game right now. I would think about it. <laughs> Gets all three. So now seconds. what George timeout called by Georgia. Now what Georgia has got to look at doing, well, I can guarantee you that Kyra Elsie is going to call a backup timeout so that she can advance the ball. Because she can't advance the ball because Joni called this timeout to get the ball down on her end of the floor. Well, they've actually reversed it and said it was Kentucky who called the timeout. You heard the PA announcer announce that it was Georgia, but the official score sheet is saying it was Kentucky who called that timeout. So now so Georgia's got it. the ball. Georgia needs to flat out try to get a five second call. All out deny. Yeah, Sarah Ashley Barker doesn't even need to worry about Ryan Howard. Like keep, you've got four against five. Just try to get a five second call and not allow the ball to come in. Patterson is immediately fouled with 4.3 left on the clock. Kentucky really asserted themselves in that second quarter. They outscored Georgia 19 to eight, led by 10 points at the half. It helped, too, that Georgia had Jenna Stady and Q Morrison in foul trouble in the first half. But Ryan Howard just had that look in her eye. She was just basically unstoppable tonight. So now Georgia will call timeout. They can advance the ball. You look at Karen Lang, the assistant coach for Joni Taylor. And Joni had told me once before, Karen is the specialist for situation so that Joni can coach the action as it's going on while Karen can sit there and think of the strategy of what they want to put, what the plays they want to run coming out of this timeout. That's why you see her in the huddle drawing things up right now. They're down by four with 3.5 seconds left. It's got to be fast. Well, it's got to be a three. And Kentucky, Kyra Elsey has to remind her team, do not foul on the shot. Make them shoot a two. And do not shoot. The worst thing that can happen is you go to overtime. Don't jump to block a three-point shot. I think they're taking a look at the clock again. 3.7 now is what the clock is reading. Into Morrison. They were looking for Connolly. She got it off, but the shot won't go, and Kentucky gets its fifth ranked win of the season. They go on the road and take down Georgia 62 to 58, one step closer to that top four seed in the SEC tournament. Ryan Howard really just brought it, put the team on her back. She got help from Chastity Patterson and Tatiana Wyatt for Kentucky to go on the road and put themselves in the top four seed for the SEC tournament. 27 points for Howard. Kentucky gets the win 62 to 58 over Georgia.